young girl named Heidi, who went to spend the summer with her grandpa in the mountains. She made the trip from the city where she lived with her neighbor because her mum and dad had to stay at work. It was a pretty long walk from the village where the train had dropped them off, but Heidi didn't complain. Everything was so beautiful, and there were lots of goats with bells jingling. It was all new to Heidi. <gasps> They're wearing bells! <laughs> Hello! Heidi had never met her grandpa before. She was really looking forward to it. Her grandpa didn't get many visitors, so he figured they were on the wrong road. Hmm? Hmm. Who's that? They're probably lost. Wait right here, Heidi. Hello. You know, this is private property. You city folks are all the same. Always interrupting. Ah. I do have work to do, you know. I can't stand around looking at the view. Oh, how nice. So, you'll be on your way, I assume? Well. You may think I'm being rather rude, but I'm rather busy. I won't bother with the introductions, eh? Oh, but I insist on it, sir. After all, that little girl you see is your <laughs> granddaughter, Heidi. Didn't you get the letter from her parents saying she would be here today? No, ma'am. I never received anything of the sort. Oh, but I sent that letter myself. There must be some misunderstanding. Your granddaughter needs some fresh air and sunshine, so please let her stay for the summer. <laughs> She's an angel. All of her things are in the bag. Come back here. Hold on. Heidi, we're all set. I didn't say yes yet. These mountains are a great place to spend a vacation. You have a good time, okay? Uh-huh. Good. Your mom and dad are going to come to visit you very soon. Goodbye. Oh, I'm going to be late for the train. I wish I'd brought my hiking shoes. <sighs> well, I better go meet my grandpa. is going to be the best. <laughs> ah, he's not in the bar. Grandpa, where are you? Mmm, <laughs> this tastes yummy. While Heidi was exploring her grandpa's place, the neighbors were wondering who the visitor was. Mr. Carter has a guest? Yes, a lady came and dropped off a little girl with a big bag. She's Mr. Carter's granddaughter from the city. Huh? Oh, are you sure about that, Peter? We didn't even know he had a granddaughter. Oh, yes, I heard them on the path. Well, Mr. Carter does keep to himself most of the time. I guess it's not really that surprising we've never seen her before. That's true, but I hope the little girl won't be too lonely up there all by herself. We'll invite them over when it looks like she's settled in. And settle in was what Heidi planned to do. As soon as you could get that big old bag in the house and meet this grandpa of hers. Hello, Grandpa. I'm Heidi. Thanks for letting me spend the summer with you. <laughs> Wow, your house is beautiful. Mom told me that you built it yourself. Is that true? Yes, I used to be a carpenter. Mom takes after you then. She's always fixing stuff around the house. <laughs> is this going to be my bed? No, you'll be sleeping in the loft. Oh, that's the area up there, right? Let me see. <laughs> Actually, I was going 
out to chop some more wood before it gets too dark. But we've got enough for now. You must be hungry. Have a seat, Heidi. Okay. There you go. Thank you, Grandpa. Oh, yummy. How come everything tastes better up here? Because it's fresh. Oh, thank you. This is the best bread ever. Mm. shooting star and then I'll be able to make a wish. Heidi, how come you're not asleep yet? I've been looking at all the pretty stars. Well, you have to close the window. You'll catch cold. Oh, do we have to? I like it open. Yes, it gets chilly up here at night. All right. Good night, Grandpa. Sweet dreams. Mm -hmm. Same to you, Heidi. All that traveling had made Heidi a bit tired, so she slept pretty late the next day. It was so nice to hear the birds chirping away and to see the sunshine. Grandpa? Maybe he went back to bed. Grandpa? Where did he go? Grandpa? like I am. I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's all right, but if you interrupt me, I won't be able to finish building this chair. I figure we both need something to sit on. Now what's wrong? Nothing. Is that really for me? Does it look like it's for me? Oh, Grandpa, uh, thank you. Yeah, sure. Now there you go, interrupting me again. I can't even move my arms now. He heard the goats for me. His name is Peter. I saw him yesterday down the path. I thought he was real friendly because he waved as we walked by. Great. Hi, you must be Heidi. How do you know? I overheard you yesterday. Oh, my grandpa says you take care of his goats for him. Yeah. Oh, they're so cute. You didn't tell me they were here, Grandpa. Sorry. So you like animals too, Heidi. They're one of my favorite things about living up here. Oh, you're lucky, Peter. Hey, what are their names? This one's Cream Puff, and that one's called Chocolate. Cream Puff and Chocolate. Boy, those names sure suit you well. I'll bet Grandpa chose them, didn't you, Grandpa? Heidi, you're interrupting my work again. I forgot. Sorry about that. Yeah, well... Maybe what you should do is go and spend the day in the fields with Peter and the goats. Do you really mean it? Sure. It's okay with Peter? Of course. I'll just go wash up and change and be right back. Okay. So Heidi got ready really quick and said goodbye to her grandpa and off she went to the fields. <laughs> to see the beautiful sunset, so they stayed on the mountain a bit longer than usual. Bye, son. It's beautiful. Everything's in red and orange and pink and purple. Peter, isn't it the most perfect sunset you've ever seen? You know, I'm glad you're 
here to remind me. What do you mean? Sometimes I take it for granted because I see it every day. But when someone new sees it, I realize how great it is. Oh. The next day, Peter took Heidi with him again, and he taught her all the goats' names and how to herd them. <laughs> Grandpa, we're back! Hi, did you miss me? Oh, hello, Heidi. We had the best afternoon. Good. Know what, Grandpa? I know how to herd goats now. I can tell them apart and everything. Peter showed me how to do it. It's great here. I've learned lots of new things, and now I have a new friend. I'll have so much to tell Mom and Dad, and you know what? <gasps> You're the best grandpa in the whole wide world. Huh? Peter, after you put the goats in the barn, you can come and join us for lunch. Okay. I'll help you, Grandpa. After lunch, Heidi taught Peter her favorite dance, and Peter taught Heidi how to milk a goat. Well, at least he tried. Heidi was so busy and having so much fun that every night she fell asleep right away. Sweet dreams, my little Heidi. The next day was Sunday, so Peter didn't have to tend the goats, but he came to pick up Heidi and bring her to his house to meet his grandma, Mrs. Fisher, and her helper, Bridget. Peter has told me so much about you, Mrs. Fisher. I'm very glad to finally meet you. I've heard a lot about you, too. You know, Peter says pretty soon no one will ever know you're from the city. They'll think you were born here. And you sound just like your mother when she was little. <gasps> I do? Mm -hmm. Do you know my grandpa, Mr. Carter? Of course I do. Your grandpa and I both grew up around here, so we've known each other for a very long time, you know. We both know he's not really as grumpy as he pretends to be, don't we? Oh, yes, I know. And now I see why Peter says he's got the best grandma ever. Now, aren't you sweet? What do you say we all go for a nice cup of hot chocolate, hmm? Peter, would you please help your grandma? Sure. May I help too, Peter? You don't mind? Not at all. It's my pleasure. You kids are great. Thank you. Careful, it's a bit hot. Okay, thank you. It smells good. It sure does. Enjoy. Thank you. I just love to eat, especially chocolate ones. They're really my favorite. You must have gotten that from your grandpa then, Heidi. Because... When we were at school, your grandpa always asked for seconds on dessert. He hid bars of chocolate in his pockets. I've done that, but they always melt. And they're messy. He was always getting in trouble for doing that, and he couldn't come play. We used to be really good friends, but now we hardly ever talk to each other, really. You should. Well, I have been meaning to invite him over, but then I always remember his house. You see, I know his house is in great shape, but mine needs a little bit of work, and I'd be too embarrassed. Sometimes it's so noisy and windy that I'm afraid the house will blow away. And Peter's too young to do that kind of work around here. We'll be all right for the summer, but this winter will be dreadful. We could manage the small things, but fixing the roof's a bigger job than any of us can handle. We don't even have a ladder that high. We'll need a real carpenter. Hey, my grandpa used to be a carpenter. He would be glad to help you. Oh, I'm sure he would. Oh, my goodness, no, Heidi. But why not, huh? Mrs. Fisher? You said it yourself. He's not as grumpy as he pretends. Oh, I know, but I wouldn't want your grandpa to think I wanted to come here just for that. It just wouldn't feel right, Heidi. But, Mrs. Fisher, neighbors are supposed to help each other out, aren't they? Yes, dear, but Mrs. Fisher has only recently become blind. That's right. It's just been six months. I didn't know that, but I'm sure people would be even more willing to help your grandma nowadays. Perhaps. But Grandma's always been independent. Always. Oh, my. Are you pretending to be blind? Watch out! Heidi! <laughs> what do you think you're doing? You could have been hurt! Bridget, is, is anyone hurt? No, they seem to be all right. What were you thinking of, Heidi? Of your grandma. But, 
But I don't understand. Well, you see, I wanted to know what it feels like to become blind. Like me. I knew it must be scary to listen to all those loud noises. <gasps> I'm going to have my grandpa fix up your house. <gasps> Come back! <gasps> Heidi told her grandpa all about her day at Mrs. Fisher's house, but she didn't really get the response she hoped for. No, I don't think so, Heidi. Why doesn't Peter do it? But you know he's not that much older than I am, Grandpa. It's impossible. They need someone with experience who knows what he's doing. There's plenty of carpenters who'd be willing to help them out, Heidi. But they're our neighbors. And Mrs. Fisher says you used to be really good friends. Oh, she did? That's right. Oh, she misses you, I think. She told me all sorts of stories about when you used to be young. Really? Yes, she told me how you used to hide chocolate bars in your pockets all the time. She's got a good memory. And you both grew up here and played together, but you haven't had a chance to see each other anymore. That's right, Heidi, and all of that was a very long while ago. We're not close friends like we used to be. You might be able to start again. No, Heidi, let's change the subject. But Grandpa... <laughs> hmm? Grandpa, wait! Hmm? Doesn't being by yourself all the time start to make you feel lonely? And a bit grumpy? If Peter weren't my friend, I'd be lonely. Oh, Heidi. Does this mean you and I won't always be friends? Does it? Grandpa, I thought I would be able to count on you always. <laughs> Your grandpa doesn't mind that you're coming with me today? I don't think so. What do you mean you don't think so? Did you leave the house without asking your grandpa if you could come? It won't matter to him. What's this now? Oh, my poor girl. What is it, ma'am? Oh, please, Heidi, what's wrong? Tell me. It's Grandpa. He said no. Oh, my. I think I understand. You went and asked your Grandpa if he'd come fix up our place, but um, he said no, and now you're disappointed in him. Oh, Heidi, people have a right to say no if they want to. Don't be mad at your Grandpa. But I thought he would say yes for sure because he's your friend. You're sweet. But you know, dear, your grandpa's a good man. Don't be disappointed. He's been living alone up the hill for a while now, and he's probably pretty set in his ways and doesn't want to be bothered. He's worked so hard all his life, he probably wants to be able to sit back and enjoy the mountain air once in a while. And he's been busy fixing up the house, so you'll be more comfortable and have a great summer here. And I hear the echoes from his wood chopping sometimes, so I know he's still working a lot. And I'm sure he loves having you around and teaching you things. And he probably knows you're sad about last night, and he feels bad. Everyone's always counted on him, but sometimes it's too much pressure. Don't be angry. He needs you. Now what, Grandpa? You're the best grandpa in the whole wide world. Mrs. Fisher says you were really good friends. Your grandfather's a good man. Everyone's always counted on him. He needs you. Listen, sounds like a woodpecker. I'll shoo it away. Where could it be? Oh, oh, oh. Why, that's Mr. Carter up there. Oh, oh. Mrs. Fisher, Mrs. Fisher. What's the matter? It's Mr. Carter. Oh, you saw him on the way to the market? No, ma'am, I saw him up on your roof. Oh, you can't be serious. 
<gasps> What's wrong? Look, huh? there's someone on our roof. Grandpa! What made him come fix our roof? Well, let's go find out. Grandpa! Oh, Heidi, Peter. You fixed it! Heidi, you're blocking traffic. Yes, but you're interrupting my work as usual. Oh, Grandpa! Huh? And you, Peter? <gasps> Please bring that board over for me. I'll teach oh. you how to do this. Right away! Huh. Here! <laughs> now you always hold the hammer steady. That ought to do it. Finally, it's all done. Oh, Grandpa, that's a very nice thing you did. Better get moving. Mr. Carter, wait. Hmm? Uh, Mrs. Fisher is very grateful to you, sir, and uh, she'd like to invite you over for coffee and cake. Sure, but could we make it tomorrow? I'm not quite presentable. You mean it? Grandpa, that's so great! Yay! I'll come over to pick up the goats bright and early so we can come back for cake. Okay. Bye. Everyone was so happy at how things had turned out that day. They were all looking forward to tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> Maybe this one. <laughs> it was a good thing Heidi and her grandpa left when they did, because the weather turned nasty all of a sudden. I'm sure Mrs. Fisher's pleased. You fixed her house just in time for this. You must have known it was coming. Thanks, Grandpa. I love you. It's so quiet, it's just wonderful. Yes, and now we'll all have a peaceful night's sleep. I don't know how we ever put up with it. This is so calm. Sweet dreams now. Thank you, Bridget, and many thanks, my old friend and Heidi. The next day, the sun was shining bright and warm. You never would have known that there had been such a frightful storm the night before. The goats were grazing happily in the field where Peter and Heidi had taken them early that morning. Those two went to their favorite spot on the mountain to admire the beautiful view. They both agreed that they were very lucky to spend the summer here together with their grandparents and they knew they'd be friends forever.